morning. Um, my name is Nicole Hart. I'm an Arkansas Veterans Commissioner, but I also head of um, RVETS, which is a veterans nonprofit, so I'm the bank. Um, in the veteran community, my question for you is, the reason why I'm here today is because in our veteran community, a lot of our veteran organizations, the events that we have, they're being targeted, connected to mental health. Um, in our research and trying to find something that, even in this slide, the way that it's being messaged is that that PTSD and mental health component is wrapped in something else. Is there any type of information out there that's specific that just targets the veteran community that speaks to the reality of what the effects are or are not connected to that so that organizations like myself or our Arkansas Veterans Coalition can push that information out because our VFWs, our posts, our, all of the people are being targeted and so we want to be able to get that information so we can push it out. That's a great question. Um, I don't know of any brochures or anything, but certainly I can give you the reference to the slide I showed that shows the PTSD symptoms are worsened by marijuana. Most people have no idea about that. And a lot of veterans I talk to, they've been told that marijuana helps, and that's absolutely not the case. That's a great point. One more, yes, sir. You know, we have to understand that the, the risks outweigh the benefits to this. One of the things I heard on the news the other day was talking about the, the work, comp, work compensation uh, claims that will go through the roof. And you know they, they can't deny you that if you have problems with pain or whatever, you know, your workers comp will have to go through. And if you could speak about that. Yeah, that's a big issue. I mean, I'm not an attorney or a, you know, a business owner, but one of the big issues that the um, employers around the state are having is, you know, right now, it, marijuana is very, different than alcohol, for instance. You smoke marijuana, that marijuana gets absorbed into the fat cells of your body, and you can test positive for marijuana 30 days, 40 days after you use, because that those metabolites are leaking out of your cells and into your bloodstream. So what happens is that you're an employer and you, let's say you they are on a construction site and something happens, they test the people for drugs, and the marijuana test comes back positive, and the employer says, well look, you know, you were using marijuana, well the, the response to that is, is well, yeah, I used two weeks ago, I wasn't high, it was just a positive test because it was coming out of my system. So now imagine, that that's already going on, there's lawsuits right now, back and forth. Imagine if you have a law that says you can't fire those people, or a pre-hiring drug screen, you can't use that to screen someone for not being on the job. So you're an employer and you've got a crane operator, and you know he's using medical marijuana, and he shows up for work, you can't, you can't fire him, so you can try to put him on something where he, you know, might not hurt himself or someone else. But you know, some construction sites don't have that. And what if, what happens if Joe, who you know has, uh, you know, medical use of medical marijuana, shows up and he's acting funny? Well, you have a choice: you either move him to another part of the construction site, or you send him home because you can't fire him. So Joe comes back the next day; he's acting funny. What are you gonna do with him then? And if you suspend him without pay, that's discrimination. So you can't fire him. You can't treat him differently. So what are you gonna do with him? So Joe learns pretty quickly. He shows up acting funny. He's gonna go home and get paid. Right. So what are you gonna do as an employer? There are already cases that I know of, that the public doesn't know about, but I know of, of people being pulled out of operating rooms for positive marijuana tests. Operating rooms. So how are you gonna handle that? Marijuana is not like alcohol. We can do a breathalyzer and determine if you're impaired. Marijuana, there's no good test like that. Even the blood test for marijuana, because if you use habitually, so much marijuana is in your fat cells that if you, a couple days later, we draw a marijuana blood test, there's so much of the metabolites coming into your blood that even those blood tests will be above the legal limit and you not be impaired. So there is gonna be, matter of fact, one of my attorney friends said, employment attorneys are gonna have a field day because this is going to be a tsunami of lawsuits against employers and, and others. So if you're concerned about people in our society who are uh, who you know need to be safe on their job, or if you work in one of these industries and you don't want Joe, the crane operator, you know, working on it when he's impaired, that's something to be concerned about. So it's a very big deal. Thanks for bringing that up. I'll stay. I'll stay if you want. If you have questions for me. So back to the call of action. Um, this is why we call pastors and community leaders here today. You have 
been given a very influential position. You have, a sphere, you have your own spheres of influence, and this is where we need your help. We have packets of information available. Luke is up, standing there. We have packets of information available outside, and what we need is help with your congregations, your sphere of influence. We need you to speak to your congregants about the dangers of medical marijuana and how it is going to negatively affect our community and how it's going to negatively affect our youth and our children. So um, we need for you to grab this information. We also have, uh, those are sets of 50. If you need more, please just um, contact me or Luke and we'll get more to you. But not only at your churches, but wherever you have influence, with your friends, your pastors, uh, other pastor friends, uh, community leaders, we need help. Because if the genie gets out of the bottle, this is like Pandora's box. If it gets out, there is no turning back. So we are imploring you. We've got to do everything that we possibly can to fight this, to keep it from passing. Because it barely, we barely defeated it the last time. I think in 2013, was that it? Um, so we're already fighting an uphill battle. And we want to be able to say that we did everything that we could to keep this from happening that I did everything in my power. I talked to all the people I have influence with. I even made a, a, an effort to go outside of my sphere of influence. Um, because in the end, it's our children and our youth, really, that are gonna suffer the most from the effects of this. So we're just imploring you that you pray, ask God for wisdom. Ask him, how can I make a difference? What can I do? Um, to make sure that I do my part to keep this from passing. So um, at this time, I'm going to ask, I know you didn't know, but if you'll, if you'll close us out in prayer, um, and then y'all have plenty of time to fellowship.